Hi, this is Barbara. I work at the Gettysburg Library, and I'm continuing to read Fairy Tales by the Brothers Grimm. I will be reading two short stories. The Fox and the Cat. It happened that the cat met the fox in a forest, and as she thought to herself, he is clever and full of experience and much esteemed in the world. She spoke to him in a friendly way. Good day, dear Mr. Fox, how are you? How is all with you? How are you getting on in these hard times? The fox, full of all kinds of arrogance, looked at the cat from head to foot, and for a long time did not know whether he would give any answer or not. At last he said, oh, you wretched beard cleaner, you piebald fool, you hungry mouse hunter, what can you be thinking of? Have you the cheek to ask how I am getting on? What have you learned? How many arts do you understand? I understand but one, replied the cat modestly. What art is that? asked the fox. When the hounds are following me, I can spring into a tree and save myself. Is that all, said the fox. I am master of a hundred arts and have into the bargain a sack full of cunning. You make me sorry for you. Come with me and I will teach you how people get away from the hounds. Just then came a hunter with four dogs. The cat sprang nimbly up a tree and sat down at the top of it where the branches and foliage quite concealed her. Open your sack, Mr. Fox, open your sack, cried the cat to him. But the dogs had already seized him and were holding him fast. Ah, Mr. Fox, cried the cat, with you, with your hundred arts, are left in the lurch. Had you been able to climb like me, you would not have lost your life. The Fox and the Horse. A farmer had a horse that had been an excellent faithful servant to him, but he was now grown too old to work. So the farmer would give him nothing more to eat and said, I want you no longer, so take yourself off out of my stable. I shall not take you back again until you are stronger than a lion. Then he opened the door and turned him adrift. The poor horse was very melancholy and wandered up and down in the wood, seeking some little shelter from the wind and the cold. Presently, a fox met him. What's the matter, my friend, said he. Why do you hang down your head and look so lonely and woebegone? Ah, replied the horse, justice and avarice never dwell in one house. My master has forgotten all that I have done for him for so many years, and because I can no longer work, he has turned me adrift and says, unless I become stronger than a lion, he will not take me back again. What chance can I have of that? He knows I have none, or he would not talk so. However, the fox bid him to be of good cheer and said, I will help you. Lie down here. Stretch yourself out quite stiff and pretend to be dead. The horse did as he was told, and the fox went straight to the lion who lived in a cave close by and said to him, A little way off lies a dead horse. Come with me, and you may make an excellent meal of his carcass. The lion was greatly pleased and set off immediately. And when they came to the horse, the fox said, you will not be able to eat him comfortably here. I'll tell you what, I will tie you fast to his tail and then you can draw him to your den and eat him at your leisure. This advice pleased the lion. So he laid him down, himself down quietly for the fox to make him fast to the horse. But the fox managed to tie his legs together and bound all so hard and fast that with all his strength, he could not set himself free. When the work was done, the fox clapped the horse on the shoulder and said, Jip, Dobbin, Jip. Then up he sprang and moved off, dragging the lion behind him. The beast began to roar and bellow till all the birds of the wood flew away for fright. But the horse let him sing on and made his way quietly over the fields to his master's house. Here he is, master, said he. I have got the better of him. And when the farmer saw his old servant, his heart relented and he said, 
thou shalt stay in thy stable and be well taken care of. And so the poor old horse had plenty to eat and lived until he died.